In this video, using Python, I take a look at the law of indices with respect to the multiplication of numbers that have the same base. Let's consider this, y to the power 4. When you look at that, you need to get used to the terminology associated with powers or with indices. And what we have here, we have y being the base and we have the 4 being the index which tells us how many y's we're going to have that we need to multiply together and in this case it's y to the 4 so that means we're going to have 4 y's as you can see here and they're all multiplied together so if we consider what I'm highlighting now this is the fourth power of the base y now we know 4 is the index and y is the base. What we need to bear in mind, however, if we're going to look at numbers that have lots of values raised to powers, we need to consider the fact that the plural of the index is indices. Let's consider the following. Here we can see we have 2 raised to the power of 2. So 2 is the base and the index is 2. And that tells us we have 2 lots of 2 that are multiplied together to give us 4. If I carry on looking at the index of a base, for example here, we can see we have 2 to the power 3. So the base is 2 and the index is 3. And that tells us we have 3 2's all multiplied together. And of course they will give us 8. Now we can carry on with this to 2 to the power 4. Where 4 is the index and 2 is the base. And we can see that gives us 4 lots of 2's all multiplied together. And when you do that multiplication you get 16. Going the other way from the 2 to the power 2 we have 2 to the power 1. Now that equals 2. And what this is telling us, if you take a base and raise it to the power 1, you will get that base. So 2 to the 1 here is 2. Another one we need to get familiar with is this. 2 to the index of 0 is 1. Whenever you raise a base to 0, you will get 1. Let's have a look at another base. Here you can see I've got a base of 16 and I'm raising that to the power of 2. So here the base is 16 and the index is 2. And that tells us how many 16's we have that need to be multiplied together. And we can see there are 2, which gives us 256. If I carry on, we can see that I have here 16 to the power 3, so again the base is 16 and the index is 3, and that tells us we have 3 16s all needed to be multiplied together to give us this value here, and I can carry on and show 16 to the power of 4, so again the base is 16 and the index is 4, telling us we have 4 16s that we need to multiply together, and that gives us this value here when the multiplication is complete. And of course, it's important to know what 16 to the 1 is, as I'm showing here, and that's 16. In the same way as 2 to the 1 gave us 2, 16 to the 1 gives us 16. Because if you raise any base to the 1, you get the base. And of course here, the base is 16, the index is 1, so we get 16. Going on, we can look at the base of 16 to the index of 0, and that will give us 1. Anything raised to the power of 0 will give us 1. Let's now generalize this. Let's take a base of A where a represents some number and if you take a to the index of 2 to the power of 2 you get two a's that are multiplied together now clearly I don't know what the result is because I don't know what the value of a is but we can see that a is the base so if I go on to a to the power 3 you can see we multiply a together three times a to the power 4 well you can see that we multiply the a together four times we also and therefore go back the other way and say well what comes before a to the 2 and clearly it's a to the 1 and that gives us a so in other words the base here is a we're raising it to the power of 1 and we end up with what the base is and I can go on and say well a to the 0 is equal to 1 because any base raised to the power 0 gives us 1 now you would also have seen this general case here earlier in this video when you had 2 to the 1 and if you remember 2 to the power 1 gave us 2 and 16 to the power 1 gave us 16 so raising to the 1 will give you whatever the base is when multiplying powers of the same base add the indices now I can show the general case for this as shown 
here. And what you can see, I have a number which is A, so the base is A. In this case, I'm raising the base to the power of M, and in this case, I'm raising the same base to the power of N. And here you can see that they're being multiplied together. Now, when this is the case, what you could do, you can write the base down, and then you can add the indices as shown here. This is the M plus the N. In other words, I'm adding up these two here. Let's have a look at a more concrete example than the one we're looking at here, as shown here. It's y to the power 5 and y to the power 2. Now, in both these cases, you can see the base is y. Now, this means we've got y written down five times, all multiplied together, as you can see here. Now, this is y to the 2. Now, that means we have y written down twice and multiplied together, and that can be seen here. Now, of course, if you look here, you can see there's a multiplication. Now, that means that multiplication must appear here, and you can see it bouncing into position now. If you then decide to count these, you'll see there's seven of them. Therefore, we can say that we write down the base and we put the power to be seven, the index to be seven, as you can see here. So, we know that this gives us this here. So we shall take the 5 and the 2, and you can see here that I've added them together. And that gives me y to the 7, which is what I showed here. So let's show another concrete example of this, and you can see it is here. The base is 2, and this is raised to the power 5, and here we can see the base is raised to the power 3. So we have the 5 and the 3, and we add them here, as you can see, to give us 2 to the 8. And 2 to the 8, when you calculate that, gives us 256. Let's now consider this Python program. And what you can see, I've set up A equaling 2, because that's the base shown here. I've let M equals 5, because that's the 5 in the position of the M. And here I'm saying let N equals 3, because this is the index in the N position. And on this line, I'm adding the M to the N, and I'm storing it in P. Now, if you consider this line, I'm printing what's calculated here. Look at this position, and you can see that is A raised to the power of M, which is reflecting this. Here, you can see I've got A raised to the power of N, which is reflecting this. Look here, and you can see there's a multiplication sign, and that multiplication sign appears here. If we go to this line, you can see I'm raising A to the power of the M added to the N. Now, this is reflecting this. And on this line, what I'm doing, I'm raising A to the power of P, where P is the addition of the M and the N that was achieved on this line. Now, of course, when we look to the output, what we need to do is to say, well, for the case of this line, I've made the A2, the M5, the N3. So if you come here, this is actually 2 to the power of 5 reflecting this. And this one is 2 to the power 3 reflecting this because of the way in which I've set these variables up here. And likewise down here, you can see that these are referring to the values that were set up here. So if I now look to the runtime, what I should find is that I get 256 in all cases. So let's see if that's the case. And you can see it does. This line gives us 256. That is reflecting this, which gives us the 256. This is 256 from this print statement, which is reflecting this here. And this is 256 given by this print statement, which is really this one here because I've added the M and the N together to give 8. So P here is 8. So this is 2 to the 8 as reflected here in the program. And that 2 gives us 256. Let's just consider another example as shown here. Now I've got the base of 4 and you can see that they've been 
raised to the power of 6 and 2 respectively. Which means I write the base down again here and I add the 6 to the 2 as you can see here and then that gives me 4 to the power 8 because 6 plus 2 is clearly 8. And of course when I run this through a calculator I will get this number here. If we now look at the computer program to do this it will be almost identical to the one we've just looked at of course. What will be different is the values that I give for A, M and N as you can see here. So I give A the value of 4 because that's the base. I give M the value of 6 because that is what we have here and N is the value of 2 to reflect this here. And these print statements are identical so we should see that the output in all three cases as put out by these three print statements should be this value and you can see in all three cases we get the appropriate output. So I've used two Python programs to show that this is correct. What I have to express, however, is this. It's for the same base. So this has to be the same base as this. And they are, in this case, they're both four. Let's have a look at another example without, on this occasion, referring to a Python program. And you can see here. I have got three numbers that are raised to a power and in every case you can see the base is 5. This one is 5 to the power 4, this one is 5 to the power 2 and this one is 5 to the power 3. And what we do, we add all of these together as shown here and of course 4 plus 2 plus 3 is 9 so this becomes 5 to the power of 9 and when you work that out with a calculator you will get this number. So the key points I would like you to take from this video are as follows. That if you have a base raised to zero, you will always get one. And we showed the example of two to the zero. We showed the example of 16 to the zero. And they will give us one. If you take a base and raise it to the one, then you get the base. And we showed that two to the one gave us two. And 16 to the one gave us 16. And the final point is shown here. If you have two numbers multiplied together where those numbers share the same base and have an indices, have a power, then what you do, you write down that base that they share and you add the indices that each of the numbers have. Now, this video appears in the complex number playlist because an understanding of the law of indices is very important when we manipulate complex numbers. The next video in the playlist is going to introduce you to another law associated with indices. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.